And bonus points to this Range Rover, the tailgate is gonna give me a nice place to sit while putting on my wetsuit. Hey crew, I've got the key to a 2024 Land Rover Range Rover P400. And today we're gonna to see what it's like to live with this large luxury SUV. We'll start by checking out the spacing in my driveway with it parked here a few inches from the edge, sitting next to a Kia Sorento that is parked right about out the edge. This is the vehicle my wife is reviewing and we consciously park them as far to the edges as possible to give us room to walk between the cars. And that is done so easily. I'll even show you what it's like to wheel through a double wide stroller. It is a tight squeeze, but fully possible. There's your first real world demonstration right there. To get inside with the key fob just in my pocket, I can hit this button on the door handle that will unlock the vehicle, deploy the door handles, unfold the mirrors. And then as I open the door, once I get it past this first notch, sort of like the Porsche Panamera I had very recently, you can stop the door just about anywhere you want to, meaning I can take it all the way out to just in front of the Sorento, giving me the red carpet entrance. And now I say, hello cabin crew, thank you for joining me for this day in the life with the Land Rover Range Rover. First, I'm gonna find some spots for the items I have, like my large water bottle, try the door. Does seem like it fits there. And the soft clothes will make sure it doesn't get rattled out. But if I didn't wanna put it there, I could also access the optional refrigerator that we have in the console with two stages of cooling. And it does fit inside as well. Of course, I wouldn't need the fridge for an insulated bottle, but it's just a demonstration there. Then I've got wallet and key fob and a smartphone. The smartphone can go on the wireless charging pad, slide for that wood piece and find that opening. There's also some extra storage in there. Maybe I'll throw the key fob there. Then we've got our cup holders hidden underneath this piece of wood, but you can slide those back and find an even deeper cubby. This is a really nice storage compartment. I'll throw the wallet in there and hopefully I won't forget about it. Then closing that up, let's start up the vehicle, hit the start stop button. That ignites the turbocharged inline six cylinder. And let's listen to the idle from outside the vehicle. So very subdued. No one in your neighborhood is going to notice your Range Rover startup. I can hear the clatter from my neighbor's Sprinter van more than I can hear this vehicle right in front of me. And now, closing up that door, throwing on my safety belt, pulling this back down into drive, and away we go. Don't even feel the gutter dip at the start of my driveway there. Now, before we exit my neighborhood, I want to test out the turning circle. So we are clear. Let me bring up the surround view camera system and crank that wheel. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> it, it's hilariously good. That turning circle is unbelievable. The rear wheel steering system helping out so much in tighter spaces. Now for the turn signal sound. <sighs> Somehow relaxing to use. Let's take a little beep of that horn. Ooh. Dignified. You are insulted by someone else, but they won't be insulted when they hear your horn. Let's begin with what I would argue as one of the most important criteria of an excellent daily driver, the seat comfort. And friends, the seats in this Range Rover are phenomenal. They're supportive. The leather feels soft on the hands and if you have exposed body parts, which I do not right now, and of course the suppleness of the padding. They just cocoon you in luxury and are aided by this adaptive air suspension, which as I've just demonstrated going over some construction, does allow you to hear that things are happening, that the suspension, the chassis is taking some punishment. You feel 
the body moving around a little bit over those surface changes. But your body stays perfectly at ease because the dampening is excellent. It takes off all edges from blemishes on the road. This vantage point as the driver is sensational. I can see so clearly out the front windshield. The large windows provide excellent naked eye visibility. And then we've got this digital rear view mirror here to see through anything I'd have in the vehicle as well. Working this steering wheel, which is heavily boosted, is so easy. Not quite as easy as a Rolls Royce, but just beneath that, it requires the most minute inputs to direct this ride. The brakes are not grabby in any sort of way, yet they haul you down with authority to a stop. Then you can have the vehicle hold itself at that stoplight by pressing harder on the brake pedal. Then just chill. You could heat or ventilate your seat, even get a massage with that option equipped. Then there's this three liter turbocharged inline six cylinder that makes 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque, considerable figures. But when accessed through this throttle in the auto drive mode, you can also press this down and gain access to a comfort program, an eco drive mode, or a dynamic mode to perk up that throttle response, which you likely won't need on your commute. So I go into eco mode most often because this really subdues the responsiveness of that throttle so you stay extra relaxed here never lacking in power but you never startling yourself with accidental over acceleration all these elements combine for this incredible calm as you begin your day you hit every red light you don't really care someone cuts you off instead of slamming on that horn you just sink further into your seats which, by the way, are overdue for giving me that massage I talked about. So let's turn that on and choose from all these different options. I want the combination because I want it all. And I want it level five intensity because anything less is just not worth doing. And now as we join the highway melee, I'm going to change my drive mode into that dynamic program, which I said I wasn't gonna do, but I'm doing it anyway. And I'm gonna pull back the selector into the sport transmission response. We'll see how the Range Rover P400 gets on from a dig. Oh, just go ahead and run it, Hyundai Nexo. That's fine. Didn't actually get to demonstrate there, but I will say that at full throttle, it's certainly not neck snapping acceleration but how about the mid-range? If I spot an opening in traffic and I want to go for it, indicate. Okay, that's better. That is much more responsive. The mid-range torque helping get you up to speed, join you with the pace of traffic, no problem there, but off the line. It's, it's very Range Rover, it's very chill down into drive and I'll press this down into the auto drive mode and I'm going to activate the adaptive cruise control system here with the steering assistance taking my hands off the wheel just to show you how it navigates the curve of the road a little bit of side-to-side -side action as it finds the lane center and it doesn't want my hands off the wheel for very long but it's doing a pretty decent job so with my hands on, always paying attention, but letting some of the auto steer reduce driving fatigue, this system can be helpful. And now I'm going to quiet up and we'll listen for the NVH level, the ambient volume inside this cabin at these highway speeds. Acknowledging that this is a louder road surface than that paved portion of tarmac off to my side. There's some more tire noise heard here, but most discernible is the wind noise here at the window seams, especially on the windscreen. We do have an acoustic laminate on the side glass, so there's not a lot of volume there, but that wind noise is penetrating the quiet of the cabin somewhat, such that I couldn't 
whisper instructions to my kids in the back seats like I could in perhaps a Rolls Royce Cullinan, but I also don't have to shout, I just can talk. Hey Billy, please stop throwing marbles at your sister, thank you. On my way into the office, I'm going to stop for a cup of coffee here at Lion and Lamb Coffee Roasters, which is part of a church, so you know, their coffee is holier than yours. And just like that, I've got my beans and I've got my brew, decaf cappuccino. Yeah, I can't handle caffeine. Now we need to find homes for these inside the Rover as we continue our journey. So let's see here, I'll pull back on the wood cover, then I'll pull back on this to access the large cubby for the beans, then I'll pull it back forward for the cup holders. Easy peasy. And in case you're curious how you look driving your Range Rover, so fancy. I will have to darken that window tint so people can't see the camera on my head. And I have arrived at work, and I'm going to park right next to Bob, well, actually not right next to him, because look at that parking job, but just a space over from Bob's old Range Rover Sport, just to remind him what new luxury looks like. Throw it in reverse, and we've got that really high resolution camera system with trajectory lines to help us into the spots with a better parking job than Bob. Parking sensors to alert us to things that are in close proximity. And there we are. And now you can stop, thank you. And... Later, Gator. Take that, Bob. Ah, oh, finally, time for my lunch break. Ah, oh, there's Bob. Bob, what you got there? Board from Target? Yeah, I, uh, I got it on a, a deal in, um, in Wailua. Wailua? Oh, this is actually a board from uh, Ricardo Omar. Oh. Very, very uh, well-known surfer in the North Shore. Oh. Made by a guy, my, one of my best friends, Pat Ross. And uh, I'm here with Chuck Brewer, Dick Brewer's nephew, and um, we're showcasing a documentary film that I'm going to be debuting next year. Oh. Here's my Range Rover Sport. Yeah, it's, it's real nice. It's a great car. Jeez, Bob. Oh, gosh. Always got to be showing me up, man. Ruin my appetite. That Bob, every time. Can you believe that guy? Oh, I'm making a documentary on some amazing surfers with my amazing surfboard. Ugh. At least he didn't completely ruin my appetite, but he did make me really want fish with all that taco surfing. So I'm gonna get some fish tacos from Baja Fish Tacos. Mmm. The real beauty of a fish taco is that not only is it delicious, of course, but it's also perfectly portable, so I can get right back on the road. While I still have a couple minutes left on my lunch break, let's go over the exterior and interior highlights for this full-size Rover as they relate to livability. Keeping it brief on the exterior, this is a well-known form. It's a sleek looking SUV. The Range Rover lettering raised up on the hood just exclaims your wealth. Curved nose there, large 22 inch wheels that retain some tire sidewall for cushioning on the road, that signature U-shape on the front doors, an uninterrupted silhouette. Here at the back, we've got some tall, slender LED taillights, more Range Rover lettering that's 3D, and a clean lower end. This is a refined physique, this Charente Gray also keeping things low profile, and yet everyone knows you've done well in life. Let's check out the interior. Swinging wide the door to give us a good access point to this semi aniline leather interior, which is in a deep garnet color. I really like that as a contrast with the gray exterior. The seats are perforated, they've got heating and ventilation as part of a package, and they power recline with these controls here. There are also sun blinds, and there's an upgraded Meridian 3D sound system as an option. Leather is covering the door panel, and then we've got some open pore wood trim here. Very nice. Stepping inside. Just a little duck of the head. Then behind my own seat at six feet tall, we've got lots of knee room. The foot pockets are large to slide my feet under, so thigh support is excellent. And headroom, there's plenty of it. Thumbs up for me. 
In the center, we've got a four zone climate control system as an option. You have two USB-C ports down there, a DC outlet and an AC outlet. In the middle seats, I can fit once again under this panoramic sunroof with space on either side for another adult or two. Armrest comes down, cup holders deploy, there's storage inside and leather topping. Man, you'd be comfortable back here in the second row. Let's check out the front. Listening to the door close noise, there is that assuring thud of quality. Like the rear seats, the fronts are heated, ventilated, and massaging, as I said, but they also add these adjusting leather armrests, which are very handy and are super signature for Range Rovers. The driver's seat has three positions of memory, power adjusting, and power folding door mirrors. Getting in here is even easier than the back. And when you're inside, the first thing I want to point out is probably not what you think it is. It's the sun visor situation. These things are big. They cover the whole view there. And then when you swing them to the side, they extend. And furthermore, there's a secondary sun visor. So you are fully insulated from that pesky sunlight when you don't want it there. We've got the digital gauge cluster that as I turn on the vehicle, We'll see here, you can reconfigure that if you want to. There's the head up display. This big infotainment system is crystal clear. And once you learn the menu structure is very easy to use. It's nicely responsive. It's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Beneath that, we've got these very handy dials which function in a variety of ways. They can adjust the temperature. You can push them in and adjust the seat ventilation or heating and then pull them out and adjust the fan speed. Just very intuitive using these single dials to do all those things. And that theme of minimalist sophistication is consistent throughout this interior. I already showed you all the different levels and features you have in this console area, and it's all disguised under this elegant facade. And that continues for the glove box setup. You don't just have one glove box, you actually have two different levels but you can hardly tell just looking at it. So with that praise having been heaped onto this interior in terms of quality and style and space and technology, I really need to hoof it back to work. Outside of my working hours, I wanna see how the Range Rover full size can accommodate my hobbies. And since Bob was going on and on about his amazing surfboard, I figured I'd pull out my nine foot and see how it fits inside. The first thing I'll need to do is clear a landing strip for my board. So I'll drop down the tailgate and then lower these seats. Nice flat floor there. Okay, so here's my plan. I'm gonna slide it in between the two front seats using the towel to protect the leather and seeing just how far I have to take it in here to clear the tailgate. Let's pull this back up. And that looks to be just about perfect. That leaves more than enough room for all my gear here, but let's see if we could put other people inside. I think we could pull this board up just ever so slightly and get one of these 40, 20, 40 split folding rear seats. So that's a person in the back. What about in the front? Does this person even fit with the long board like this? Okay, I'm sitting perfectly straight, head not kinked at all. And yeah, the board is, you know, half an inch from my face, but this could totally work. Now, the problem would be if you have two other people is bringing two other boards. I said there's room over here for gear, but those boards would definitely have to be shorter than another two long boards to all fit inside, or you'd have to option on the roof rails. Now, a fair question is, what is the driving experience like with that surfboard in the car? And honestly, apart from seeing it in my peripherals, I don't even notice it. This is just as comfortable as it was before. Important question number two is going to be how quickly can a Range Rover P400 get to 60 with a longboard surfboard in it? So I've got my race box set up here to record because I wasn't getting a signal anywhere else in the vehicle. I'm back in the dynamic drive mode and I'm in the sport powertrain or transmission response. We're about to find out. All right, little brake boosting off the line and We've arrived at 60 in 6.19 seconds. That matches the pace of a longboard surfboard. Slow, but smooth. All right, made it here and managed to get a parking spot, which was not a foregone conclusion given just how busy it is today. Everyone is here at the water 
and certainly I can see why people are in the water. We've got a swell going on, so usually this beach has two to three feet, and we're seeing four to six foot waves. Cannot wait to go join them. And bonus points to this Range Rover, the tailgate is gonna give me a nice place to sit while putting on my wetsuit. All right, I'm all suited up, but I've got one final step, and that's going to be closing and locking this vehicle. Followed by finding a spot for this key. So I tried the wheel spokes and they're too darn thick, but this is gonna work out just fine. All right, let's go. Oh man, the first hour was insane. And the next 15 minutes until I about gave up, it got really choppy. All the while it was super crowded because everyone else was really enjoying the big waves. Just absolutely amazing though. Before we get to our night drive conclusion, I want to top up the fuel tank in this Range Rover P400, which is a 24 gallon tank. And with the fuel economy ratings of 18 MPG in the city, 26 on the highway and 21 combined, you should get over 500 miles on a tank, but we've been seeing 15.1 MPG. So you'll have less range than that. And at current fuel prices of $5.29 for premium fuel, filling up those 24 gallons is gonna cost you $127. So what do we got here? No capless fueling? Come on, Land Rover. You get that in vehicles costing a third this price. All right, I've got the Rover back out at night for me to summarize my thoughts on what it's like to live with. And check out these cool puddle lamps. In terms of livability, let's start with the things that are less than perfect in this Range Rover. And it is a short list. The first is the cabin NVH level at highway speeds. It's louder in here than one might hope for for $130,000 as tested. Then there's the fuel economy. The EPA rates the Range Rover P400 at 21 combined MPG, but I've been seeing more like 15 combined. And this last one isn't a guarantee, but based on Land Rover's track record for reliability, it's something you should be wary of. I personally know people who have had catastrophic failure with their various Land Rover models, so it's it's just an ever-present possibility. And that's about it. Seriously, my list of quibbles for living with a Range Rover is so short in comparison to all the things I have loved about it. We'll start with the ride quality. This adaptive air suspension is so compliant over the undulations in the road, which is aided by the fact that these seats are endlessly comfortable. With this excellent seating vantage point, the large windows all around, and tech features like a digital rear view mirror, the visibility out of the Range Rover is sensational. Then that rear wheel steering system makes it so darn easy to maneuver this large SUV, doesn't matter how small the space. I suppose this next one is subjective, but I find the Range Rover's design to be dignified, not ostentatious. And this final point could be summarized in just one word, but really is a three-parter. That word is space. You have space for everything in this vehicle, whether that's for five passengers to sit comfortably, or for your hobby materials like a surfboard, or for all the little accoutrements that you have with you on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a cubby for just about everything. And so with all that said, I have no hesitation saying that the Land Rover Range Rover is the most enjoyable to live with luxury SUV for under 150,000 bucks. It just has wowed me with my time with it. I don't want to give it up and I will see you again next time.